Hello, I'm Paul Pirello and welcome to The Philly Factor. An approved private school founded in 1957 has recently marked a milestone with a new look, new location, and new name, and its mission to discover, develop, and deliver opportunities for children with unique challenges and abilities achieve their full potential. Green Tree School and Services, located uh, at 1196 East Washington Lane in Philadelphia, we're pleased to have with us Patricia Wellenbach, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Green Tree School and Services. And Patricia, welcome to the program. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. It's got to be a real exciting time, as I said at the outset of the program, you know, new look, new location, new name. So it's got to be a real exciting time at Green Tree School and Services. It is. It's a very energizing time. We are in a brand new 60,000 square foot state-of-the-art building, specifically designed to provide the education and supportive care services for kids 5 to 21 who has special needs and unique challenges. And uh, it is the first time in our 57 year history that all of our staff and divisions are working under one roof. So the opportunity for collaboration and shared learning uh, is just being uh, realized for the first time. Yeah, so uh, this is truly a remarkable school, everything that I've read about it. I mean, when we go back 57 years when the school was actually founded, you know, it was a different time, different place. Mm -hmm. Society was much different and when a child um, would uh, develop or a family would learn that their child had special um, um, learning needs. Oftentimes that, that school, that school district, the family didn't know where to turn or what to do and oftentimes that child would be ostracized. That child would just stay at home or would be institutionalized. So you know when we flash forward now 57 years it is yeah. truly remarkable how far we have come. It is. When you think about it, 57 years ago I don't think anybody knew what the word autism was, mm -hmm. and now it's part of everyday vernacular. You can't open a newspaper, turn on a TV, a blog where someone's not talking about it. The population we serve are kids that are either on the autism spectrum or have been diagnosed with emotional disturbance. Mm -hmm. So it's two, it's two components that are inf affecting these kids and their ability to learn and integrate and successfully realize their potential. But again, there was no one really wanted to deal with it, understand it, understand how to work with kids, uh, understand the types of modalities in education and supportive care services that were going to help them really work around the challenges they have, mm -hmm. um, not let those challenges define them, but have those challenges be part of who they are in addition to all of the wonderful things that they can bring to a family, to a school, to a community. So. Uh, you mentioned the term autism and the, and the spectrum of, uh, of autism. And you know, uh, I guess a lot of people may think they know what autism is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Everybody has an idea of what it might be. So could we discuss a little bit about what is autism? So it is a wide range, that's why they call it a spectrum, um, and individuals can be uh, affected in modest ways or more significant ways. Um, some kids just have trouble connecting with people emotionally, um, and some kids are challenged enough that they really can make no connection with an individual, can't learn really well, and really need to be focused and driven in, in certain ways. Um, I think for any parent or family member who's concerned about a kid, your best resource is to start with your pediatrician mm -hmm. uh, or a good teacher and say, I'm, I'm getting a feeling, you know, families, parents, they know their kids. And when things aren't feeling right, they, they have an intuitive sense and uh, it can be a scary time. But I think that once the, the kind of situation is diagnosed and there's an understanding mm -hmm. and there's a plan in place for that child and that family, there is a bit of a sense of relief that they know what they're dealing with what their resources are and a little bit of how they're going to get there. It is a big unknown um, and I think for a family going through this there is probably no more profound challenge. Um, it's, it's not in a way like a child who has an illness that may be treatable and solvable, mm -hmm. you know, and resolvable. This is an issue that will be with that child and with that family for the rest of his or her life. Sure. Uh, and, and, and so the children then that are at the Green Tree School, are they coming primarily from the city of Philadelphia? Are they coming from the region? And, and how are they referred to Green Tree? We'll start with the last question. Okay. They are referred from their district, from their classroom. Um, some kids can manage uh, even with some challenges in classroom. And our goal is to get kids in the right place that will help them maximize their potential. 
sometimes it just becomes too much for a child to learn effectively and integrate well in a classroom and so the child will get referred to us from the district mm -hmm. and we'll take referrals from any district. Um, we are an approved private school so we have an allocation from the state to provide those education services. Sometimes kids are with us for a year or two, sometimes longer, you know, and as I said, our goal is to get that child in the right environment so that they can really maximize their potential. Okay. Um, we, we talk about the school, we talk about the physical location of the uh -huh. school, but uh, as we said at the outset of the program, you know, a new name because now it's just more than a brick and mortar type building yes. where children uh, to young adults come for education. There are so many other aspects of Green Tree Correct. School and Services. We have a very robust behavioral health division where we actually work in districts, in classrooms. Uh, we provide the support services an individual child may need to actually effectively stay in mm -hmm. a district classroom. Um, we also do mobile therapy, so we're in communities, in, in families' homes, in, in working with the families um, to create modalities for learning and social integration so that they can do well at home, um, learn how to play well on a basketball court or go to a dance class, uh, you know, these kids want to learn and they want to become active in their communities and they should be given that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So our behavioral health work is about two thirds of what we do. So even though we have this big, uh, wonderful building that can do lots of wonderful things inside the building, we do a lot throughout the community. We also have a very active outpatient clinic uh, where we do medication management, psychiatric intervention and therapy and group therapy. Mm. How, um, um, uh, how easy has it been to um, bring everything under one roof then? Because uh, prior to this, you were operating at yes. different locations. So I guess yes. it's got to be a tremendous relief and very productive to have everything under one roof as mm -hmm. opposed to separate locations. The extraordinary history of Green Tree School when it first started was that it was founded in a little house on Walnut Lane in Germantown, a house that was built in the 1800s, mm -hmm. and it was a very nurturing environment. Again, it was the 1950s, a very different world. Sure. Uh, even just the way we taught, you know, it was books and pens and papers. Now it's technology and computers and arts and creative expression. None of that was really around at the time. Over the years, they just stayed within that geographic footprint and we did all of our work and it was very good work uh, in three small houses and then a, an annex building that they built to, to found and then run the autism support program. But we knew we were missing something and we knew that kids need to learn in an environment that feels and looks like a classroom. Mm -hmm. And we knew that teachers really needed to be honored for their commitment to teaching and educating kids with special needs in a place that looks and feels like a classroom. So the board, in great wisdom, took a long time and found a, a plot of land, committed to stay in the Germantown neighborhood. We wanted to continue to be part of the neighborhood. We're only about a mile from where we originally were. And I'm fond of saying that I don't even think we bought a paperclip with us from the old site. Everything is new. The most current in technology, textbooks, um, classroom fit outs, uh, everything is new. We have a beautiful movement studio, a gorgeous music studio, which is right next to my office, so I get to hear the kids sure. playing all the time, drums and piano and guitars, and, uh, and a fabulous art studio where we have two kilns. So art and creative expression is a very important modality for kids in learning to channel their energy and learning to pace themselves and make good choices. So. Um, the art teacher is fond of reminding me that right now her storage closet is what her classroom used to look like. <laughs> and the, I, I will say the, the, the teachers are, are thrilled to be there and uh, it's, the, the future is bright and there are great opportunities for partnership and collaboration and we're just starting to tease all of that out. You mentioned the teachers because really, um, uh, not only yourself, but any CEO or COO or anybody that's running any type of organization can only be as good as the support staff that is there. So you talk about these teachers who are committed to be there because these are special special students. I mean, these are students that need um, uh, special teachers to, to, to watch over them and to nurture them and to educate them. So uh, can we talk a little bit about the staff and the teachers? Sure. Yeah, I'm very blessed. I have an extraordinary staff. I take my commitment to my staff as strongly as I do to every kid that walks in the door. Uh, I think your point is well taken. They are really unique individuals who have a calling. 
what I find extraordinary is that uh, in my organization, I have individuals who have been uh, teaching and working with kids with unique challenges and special needs for a couple of decades, and I have young emerging professionals who've been in the field for you know less than a dozen years. Mm -hmm. And together, they make a beautiful mix mm -hmm. of what we can achieve, and uh, the energy and enthusiasm they bring every day is, is pretty impressive. Um, I think the world of them, and there is not enough I can do to value them um, and, and the work that they're doing for just, it, it's really not for me, and I, I'm fond of saying that I get to come on shows like this or go out and speak in public and, and really express my gratitude to everyone who's doing the work, but I'm not doing the work. I just get to talk about it, sure. and it's the people on the front line that are really doing the work. As, as, you, uh, as you moved into this new chapter for Green mm -hmm. Tree School and Services, has the mission changed, uh, I mean, in, in your mission statement, uh, the original mission statement, I mean, any organization has to grow, it has to be organic because you have mm -hmm. to change with the times. Correct. I mean, while the mission is still to help these, these children with, with special needs, has your mission changed over the years? Fundamentally, our mission has always been to educate and support children through young adulthood so that they can have the best quality of life and make the best contribution they can to their community. The language has changed over the years mm -hmm. as we've understood it differently. I, I think our mission will never actually change. How we do that may change. Mm -hmm. uh, we might not always do it in an approved private school. We may find other opportunities. We have an entire wing of our new building that is called our Is It Wing for Innovation, uh, Training, and Integrated Services. Um, and we intend to do research and work with interesting partners to find out if not only should we be doing the best practices, but what are the next practices so that we're really ahead of the curve um, in helping kids and families navigate their way through the lifespan. Um, we start with kids as early as 12 in planning a transition plan. Yeah. Um, and they may stay with us until they're 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, but it takes a while mm -hmm. um, to get kids ready to go. Even kids that don't have challenges, it takes a while to get sure. them ready to launch. Mm -hmm. So uh, we start really early in working around life skills and vocational training. Uh, because we want them to feel valuable and valued uh, in the community. Once uh, um, a student is referred to Green Tree and mm -hmm. they, and they um, uh, are admitted into the school, are they there for the entire run, if you will, the entire time? Or do you find that oftentimes, and every case I know is individual and mm -hmm. is different, but can a student come and stay maybe a year, two years, three years, and depending on their improvement, they're able to I hate to use the term mainstream back into another environment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have actually two students who will be leaving us shortly after a, a, a run mm -hmm. in, in our approved private school. And uh, they're going back to district and they're in high school and mm. they're going to go to their junior prom. Wow. Um, now we do have a prom, but it's not like a high school junior prom. We do it, something a little bit different. Um, but it's terrific for them and, and we're very proud of them and very happy for them. Um, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean that we won't abandon them. Mm -hmm. We'll continue to stay connected to them and potentially provide support through our outpatient clinic or additional behavioral health services. So we never really leave, we just try to find the best place for the kid at that time. Sure. Um, um, during our interview, we're putting information up on the screen, phone number, address, website for uh, Green Tree School and Services where people can uh, reach out if you want to know more information about what exactly uh, services, what services are available to you, more information uh, about the school. And chances are, as a result of this program, there may be a family that is watching this show and they may say, gee, this sounds like a program or something that I need to explore mm -hmm. for my child. And what do you say to the parent who might be a little reluctant to take that first step because of the stigma that is often associated with children with learning disabilities? Yeah, I would just say take a deep breath and trust your instinct and make the call. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to answer the phone and we're going to talk you off the ledge uh, and find a way to help you. We might not be the right answer. Sure. And if we're not, we will help you find the right answer. Uh, I have an extraordinarily gifted team that is well connected in this community of uh, special needs and, and dealing with kids with special challenges. And, and uh, we will make sure that you land in the right place. Um, it's the thing that a parent wants the most for their child. Sure, absolutely. So. How does the school, um, and, and as you move forward in this 
uh, world that we live in so technologically advanced. I mean, how in, in your role as the CEO, how are you able to stay on the cutting edge and mm -hmm. stay in front of, because there are other schools out there that do similar work, and maybe they do a little bit different work, but right. how do you stay out in front of the pack and be right on the cusp of everything that is going on to be relevant and to be helpful right. today? So for me, it's putting the best and brightest at the table with me, the people who are the experts in the field. We have a brand new director, executive director of our behavioral health division. We have a, a brand new director of our autism support program and actually we're looking to recruit a new um, uh, director for our special ed program mm -hmm. and I want people who are going to sit at the table who are going to continue to look at the research and what's going on and say let's try this we should be doing this this is who we should be partnering with we're having pretty extraordinary conversations in the region mm -hmm. with important partners who are doing work in special needs education both in the autism world and and in, and, and issues around trauma mm -hmm. um, and in kids who are having some emotional disturbance so we're really looking for those types of partnerships and we're going to continue to pursue them mm -hmm. um, I don't want to reinvent the wheel sure. and I don't need to do what everyone else is doing. So what we're looking for is the place where no one is making an inroad and say, okay, what can we do to make the inroad in that area? Who should we be working with and making sure that that work is getting done well? And I am a big believer in, you know, show me the data. So there will always be data and outcomes metrics with everything that we're doing. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing there has got to be not only on your level, but on every person that works with you at the school and, and all the outreach that you do, there's got to be a tremendous amount of uh, personal satisfaction mm -hmm. that when a parent comes to you and says, I'm so glad that I found you and I'm so glad that um, John's teacher or Mary's teacher was able to help my child through whatever it is. I mean, there's got to be a tremendous amount of um, satisfaction in hearing that from a parent because you just said just a moment ago it really is all about the very wanting the very best right. for your child I'll tell you a story last we have graduation every year because mm -hmm. every year we do have graduates sure. and it's a very poignant time of year you know I'm, I'm the mother of two adult sons now and I remember their graduations and going to them and we have very small classes so sure. it's not like we're giving out lots of awards and things like that so we had a few kids graduating last year and a young boy gave up to give the uh, speech on behalf of the graduating class. And um, the head of school looked to the mother and said, he doesn't have his notes. And they all kind of panicked a little. And I'll tell you, he walked to that podium, looked out in that audience, and he gave his uh, remarks, didn't skip a beat, and finished. And his mother was, she, she, she couldn't even blink. And she came up to me later and she said, when he came here three years ago, he was nonverbal. Wow. And this is a young man who then three years later was able to stand in front of his student friends and his teachers and give what I found was a very profoundly moving mm -hmm. um, commencement speech. Um, it, it probably wouldn't necessarily make it on YouTube, but I was very proud of him. And, and those are moments that you just can't pay for. Sure. I mean, that's the, the reward on the Mm -hmm. And as these, um, uh, as these students move through the school and they, uh, they get ready to transition mm -hmm. into that, um, you know, the early adulthood, yes. um, um, is, does the school follow them? Uh, as you said, I think you mentioned before that you will always be with them in the, mm -hmm. along the step of the way, you, you know, with them. So, I mean, what is the connection with the school once they transition out of the school to wherever it is they go next? Right. So we work with their families to make sure that they have a good transition plan in place. And if we're needed, the families will come back and reconnect with us and talk to us about issues. But really, it's time for them to move on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our classes are small, five, seven kids in a class. So we get very connected to them. And um, uh, that, that kind of personal connection to those kids never goes away. Mm -hmm. When um, you look back now, and you've, you've been with the Green Tree School down for, for a while, you look back at this experience. How has this shaped you? How has this shaped you as a leader mm -hmm. of a school and, and not only the students, but the staff that you, know, that you work with every day? Right. You know, I take very seriously the fact that on a daily basis, uh, parents from around this region entrust me with their most precious possession, their child. Mm -hmm. And um, I, 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 there isn't enough that I can't do for them. Mm -hmm. And I, there is no lengths that I won't go to to make sure that they get the highest and the best in quality. I was very lucky. I had two boys and they did well. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, they, aside from the normal bumps and scrapes of getting through early childhood and a couple of hiccups as teenagers, 
there weren't any big traumatic events, and, and I can't imagine the challenge of every day um, having to live with that. And, and, you know, as parents, you think about milestones with your kids, and they're the big things. Do they walk? Do they talk? Do they? And for these parents, it's did he or she get up and brush their teeth in the morning? Mm -hmm. um, did they remember to take a shower? Did they, could they do, you know, six math problems? Mm -hmm. um, and those are huge milestones. Um, so those are moments that really are very rewarding. And, uh, you know, it's very interesting to come on programs like this and talk about the work, but I get to go back and get reminded. Um, and uh, I love to see their faces. Um, and uh, they call me Miss Trish when I come in the classroom, and uh, they're, they're really terrific. We, we, I bet you at the outset of the program, and you also brought it up, that uh, the Green Tree School is an approved private school. Can, Correct. Can, can, so can you describe for me, because people may, you know, private school conjures up, right. one, one of the things it conjures up many images to people. So what does it mean that it's an approved private school? Okay, that's an excellent question. Um, just so you know, we don't take tuition. Okay. Um, approved private school has been evaluated at the state level, and we get an allocation for the state to educate a certain number of kids in our classrooms. Um, we, and so we allow for referral from districts, any district, mm -hmm. um, and then we work with the district around the busing and a host of other things. So there's no additional charge to a family. Um, if a family is interested they can also send students to our we can take a few students who would have third-party payer reimbursable mm -hmm. um, that way so but there isn't a, a tuition with it like an independent school or a private school well, we may have touched upon this earlier in the program saying that the school is located in germantown but you really are uh, reaching out to people in the entire philadelphia area right. and outside of the philadelphia area what, what would be the uh, i guess you know um, the demographic or the makeup of the school? I mean, where are you seeing students come from? Are they just inner city students? Are they coming from maybe the main line? I mean, mm -hmm. where, where are you pulling students from? Because of our location and where we, we used to be and we were constrained by our footprint, we were mostly serving kids in the Philadelphia School District. Mm -hmm. um, but now we have this capacity to take more. And since we've been in the new building and, and letting people know about it, we've been getting a lot of calls from Radnor, Lower Marion, Tredyffrin, Swarthmore, um, uh, you know, so we want to be able to be a good partner with mm -hmm. all of the school districts, and if we can help serve the districts and those kids, we want to be there to do that. Abington, a host of others, so. Yeah, uh, in the few minutes that we have left, for the parent who's watching this and may be looking at a school for their child, what should they be looking for in a school, whether it's Green Tree or there are other schools out there that do mm -hmm. similar work, but what type of questions should they be asking the administrators? What type of programs should be offered? I know it's a broad question, but yeah. it's an important question because we talked earlier about parents not knowing which way to turn. So what should they be looking for in a school mm -hmm. for their child? So depending on the acuity level of the child, and, and that would influence it a lot, let's talk about the scope of services that you can provide. Talk to us about the intervention treatments that you can do if there's medication management and volume. I mean, we can add all of that. Some mm -hmm. schools don't have that component. Um, talk to us about after school services and additional behavioral health work that we could get through you. Um, I would say talk about the mix of kids in the classroom, the qualifications of a teacher, just the fundamental questions that any parent would ask when a child would, would be applying to a school. We're gonna be very honest with you. Um, because the, the success of your child is the most important thing to us. So if we believe that we can serve your child well, we're going to tell you that. And if we believe it's not going to work, we will tell you that also and give you some resources so that you can go somewhere else. So can parents come and take a tour of the school? Could they come in? Are there open houses that you have that people, um, parents could come in and see firsthand the work that's being done at the school? Parents can come in. We'd be happy to give anyone a tour anytime. A child really has to get referred through district, mm -hmm. but parents have a tendency to be the best advocate for their child. So if a parent is concerned that a child needs more services, they should first have the conversation in the district and say, listen, we, we think that this isn't working as well as it could be for my son or daughter. Can we talk about that? Mm -hmm. um, so that's how it begins. And the process should begin with the parent talking to um, the district, and then Correct. the district is making the referral to Correct. the school. That's, yes. uh, that's interesting. Um, a few minutes left here. Anything else that you would like to add? Because I, I, I said before we even began that I didn't even know Green mm -hmm. Tree School existed before the program, and literally you're five minutes here from campus here at LaSalle. Uh, it's one of those best-kept secrets, and hopefully yeah. we're able to uh, shed more knowledge uh, to the audience at large about the work that you do. 
I would just say that we are going to continue to commit to excellence um, and quality. Uh, when my CEO and I joined the organization, uh, we made a commitment to be a provider of choice mm -hmm. as well as an employer of choice. So if you are a family that is struggling with a child, we'd be happy to talk to you. And if you're a professional who's looking for an extraordinary new mm -hmm. opportunity and place to work, we'd love to talk to sure. you too. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to ask the question as you celebrate your 56th, 57th anniversary, where you see the school 56 or 57 <laughs> years from now. But I mean, you as the CEO probably have a long-term plan for the school. So let's talk, you know, where do you see the school in the next five years? Do we see it progressing down the road? I see us constantly evolving uh, and creating new programs and initiatives. I see tremendous opportunities for partnerships. We're in the hotbed of universities and schools of nursing and medicine and those are all individual entities that we should be partnering with and I want to be doing that work. I want to be publishing casework. I want to be showing what we should be doing and again I want to have success stories for every kid that walks in and out of our doors. Mm -hmm. That's really what is going to make it worthwhile in the end. This has been a fascinating uh, half hour uh, talking about Green Tree School and Services and needless to say we just scratched the surface. Continued success. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Uh, we want to mention that if uh, people want more information they could always go online Yep. Uh, and the website is www.gts-s.org. All right. And uh, we invite you to go and check out online everything that they have to offer at Green Tree School and Services. I want to thank Patricia for being with us on this edition of the program. Until the next time, my name is Paul Perello. Thanks so much for watching The Philly Factor.